Hey guys, Bubba here. Um, this one's going to be a real interesting video. Um, I believe it's Holy Spirit uh, led just looking through research and trying to find out some things today. Uh, but some big things change, uh, big things coming, but uh, big changes, you know. Um, I don't know what you guys think about the Planet X thing and everything. And uh, please, please, please don't go away just because I said that. Um, this gets uh, really deep and this ties into what I want to talk about. Uh, but uh, the mounting evidence is there, and it's coming up for uh, uh, <laughs> probably disclosure and uh, probably arrival uh, very soon, uh, May of 2022. But what I want to talk about is how all this ties into what we're seeing in the skies right now. And it goes into my uh, uh, a search I did for the Mashiach um, there on uh, YouTube. But guys, this is big. Uh, Herculobus, uh, I believe it is. Comet Typhon. I was just reading about that uh, visible as well. Um, there's just a lot of things coming up and even, uh, science, uh, magazine did an article on this. Um, but you know, the blue, uh, Kachina, the red Kachina, Hopi prophecy, I've always uh, found interest in that, but yeah, the science mag, uh, thing, they had a thing here, a uh, ninth planet for the solar system. You know, this was five years ago and there's mounting evidence and a, a big, big shout out to the final days, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, it was just recently introduced, uh, here in the past month, but they are catching multiple, multiple, multiple. And uh, check this out here with this next image. Look at this. They talk about Nemesis. And Nibiru, Nibiru, Planet X, Planet 9. Um, it, it, it's hard to understand. It's hard to explain actually what's coming. But, you know, we, we know about Wormwood. We know that's mentioned in the, the book of Revelation there. And we know that the, the, the stuff coming in the skies Men hearts are going to fail them for fear. They're going to have heart attacks, seeing those things which are coming to pass upon the earth. Uh, you know, but a lot of people don't believe uh, independent journalists like myself or others, you know, without articles. So uh, here's from the independent. Of, <laughs> ironic, I know, right? Independent. Um, but yeah, they, they talk about it. They show it. But on the flip side, they hide so much from us, too. I mean, they don't want us to see what they see. They don't want us to know what they know. I mean, the, you even have uh, the Lucifer telescope out there. They're seeing this thing coming to pass, and this is my dream, too, that it starts coming fruition in February, and we see it full on May. Just taking that short pause there made me think of May Day, May Day. Uh, but guys, uh, Joel 2, 28, and it shall come to pass that I will pour up my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And it goes on to talk about uh, 30, 31, uh, you know, uh, darkness, moon into blood, uh, the great day of the Lord, uh, Earth, blood, fire, pillars of smoke, nuclear war. And that's another one I want to talk about, the attack coming on America and the attacks going around the world. But guys, this is how I got going uh, with the Bible prophecy and just wanting to research more. I started uh, getting in interested through church, uh, Jack Van Impey and uh, his stuff because he's uh, he was a personal friend of my grandma and grandpa. And uh, I started uh, researching his stuff and uh, Bible prophecy in 1983. And I didn't get saved till 85 when I realized uh, that I had a... a I had knowledge, and I didn't have a heart knowledge. But uh, maybe this uh, video will reach out to J.D. Farag or uh, Jack Hibbs or uh, Amir Safar, the uh, uh, Prophecy Watchers, uh, Gary Stearman there, uh, Billy Crone, these guys, I love them. Uh, these are the guys I'm following now, uh, Generation 2434. You know, you got Chooch over there. Uh, what a nut. Uh, love him to death. Uh, you know, just good stuff. But, yeah, the stuff coming up for 2022 is just really nuts. In 2021, it's hard to believe it's just poof, it's gone. You know, uh, here we are, uh, but uh, uh, here at the end of March, there's a bunch of stuff coming up and forgive me, but I'm going to show some astrological stuff, astrology. Yeah. Don't touch that stuff, but I want you guys to see what they're looking for. So uh, uh, pay attention here. April 30th, black moon, black moon, the third biggest astronomical event of the year is the only one that cannot be seen. Even with the help of a telescope, the blue moon became popularized to describe the second full moon in the calendar month, even though the moon does not turn blue in color. April's black moon is the counterpart to the blue moon used to describe the second new moon of the month. New moons cannot be observed as it is a time when the illuminated side of the moon is facing away from the earth. That's why it's black, dark. But this one is actually an eclipse on top of it. There's a freaking lunar eclipse on top of the dark moon that you can't see. Uh, anyway, the new moon. Okay, uh, the, uh, Yeah, but then you have the full-on uh, lunar eclipse, May 15th through 16th. Uh, uh, the entire United States, guys, we get to witness the moon passing through the Earth's shadow as long as the weather cooperates. This is going to be a sign. This is a full-on omen coming. May 15th, after what's coming, uh, uh, Passover, 
uh, Nissan 14 into 15 there. Uh, the last supermoon of 2022 to rise. There all kinds of nutty stuff is coming. Um, April 30th, when this is going on, and this guy I found, I'm going to show you guys here in a minute what I'm talking about. It's just, it all just ties together. But this is this partial solar eclipse. Remember, we were just talking about the black moon. It's a dark moon. But on top of that, they're also getting a freaking eclipse on top of the dark moon. But check it out. What do you see there? Hello? Anybody paying attention here? This is a mega, mega sign, April 30th. And why, why, why is it happening again down towards Antarctica? This is what I do not get, guys. But this all ties into the sun, uh, the sun god Ra, doesn't it, too, with the, 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 the thing there at the top of the horns? Maybe you guys can help me. Uh, you know, I don't know enough about this stuff. I just know of it. So, but, but check this out. I want you to see where it's going over uh, South America. Um, again, look, it's it, it, right there off of uh, Antarctica going to right there. The Falkland Islands, the, the, the far tips, uh, whatever that is down there. Again, leaving Antarctica, keeping in the dark all the way right there to the south part of South America. And with this stuff, with the signs in the sky that they're going to see with the horns, but check this out. Here's the May 15th, the one year or the one month from Easter of April 15th, tax day of all things, a full blood moon over the entire United States. Now check this out when it goes actually red. I'm still here. I'm just watching. I know I should have put this on a faster speed, but. This just gets nuts. Watch this out. This goes over the entire United States. Guys, watch. Look, it goes red. A freaking blood moon on May 15th. Now, check this out on top of that. May 14th is the one-year anniversary of, well, May 14th, 1948. Israel became a nation again. Okay. That takes us to 2028. Well, if this is 2022, that takes us to 2029. But guess what, guys? Israel is still 80 years old on May this time right as this approaches you know what i'm saying no you don't okay but anyway what i'm trying to get as the 80 year prophecy of uh the what is that psalm 90 verse 10 uh, 70 years up to 80 years but check this out here we're going to go into the dark forgive me jupiter and pisces 2022 this is what they're looking at check this out during this transit we are in a war for possession of our souls the Collective summons up the Spiritual Warrior. This is March 26th through May 11th. They go on to say it's about utter annihilation or rebirth, heaven or hell. So the Day of Judgment is upon us. As I've said before, we are currently living in biblical times. Will there be floods? Will there be a second coming? Will there be an alien disclosure? Probably all three. With Jupiter and Pisces, anything is possible. You know, so then I go to uh, earlier, I was typing in uh, Moshiach there into YouTube, and this popped up. So I'm like, what is this? So I wanted to find out. Uh, the Messiah Moshiach to make his appearance in 2022. This came out from Tor Light. So I, uh, you know what? Uh, let's find out. I uh, let's subscribe. Let's find out what he's got to say. Um, you know, support others. Uh, the small independent guy. Uh, but guys, like, this is deep. Here no, we go. I had that dream where the Moshiach says. Uh, next year, um, I'm going to share knowledge and wisdom. That was, I think, back in September. I have it in my videos. Um, and I was thinking, you know, if he says that in a dream, doesn't that make it a prophecy? And I was like, yeah, it has to, it has to be a prophecy because if it's said in the dream, you know, I'm, you know, I'm always skeptical about visions and stuff like that while you're awake. But dreams, you know, you don't control them. So um, I was thinking it has to be a prophecy. And if it is true, uh, I've been meditating on this uh, because... Uh, you know, I, I, I've shared three dreams. Um, so, so if you guys remember, I shared this, um, I heard the Mashiach, it was either September 2020 or November or December. I'm going to start writing down my dreams so that I can date them. Um, but anyway, um, he says, I'm not coming until after Passover. Well, that means that he's not coming until after Passover. So the Passover already happened last year. Um, he hasn't arrived. So it has to happen between that Passover. I mean, after that Passover and uh, and the next Passover, right? Because it said after that Passover. And then I had the, I already shared next year, I will share uh, knowledge and wisdom. And then I recently shared a dream where I saw uh, my father reading a book and in the title of the book, it said the last year before God um, as the title of the book. So that this is all pointing to next year.
next year. So I was thinking um, that has to be a prophecy because it, you know, you hear these prophets in the Torah, right? They, uh, uh, they get these prophecies in a dream. So it has to be a prophecy. So I thought to myself, well, if, it, if 2020 is significant, then something has to happen in the sky. That's what I thought this morning. So I'm going to share what, I, what I'm seeing. You know, and I shared this dream before. I was in the temple um, and in heaven. And um, this is a dream. And I was looking at Hashem. He had a robe that was made up of a rainbow. And that's significant because when Ezekiel saw Hashem in a dream, he says that the, um, the aura or the brilliance around him was like a rainbow. So it's the same being or the same God. Um, and before him, he was teaching me how the heavens proclaim his majesty. I went, to the, I went to the Torah looking for something. I couldn't find anything. But I saw uh, this in Psalms when I got up from that dream. That pretty much says the same thing. The heavens declare the glory of Hashem and the firmament tells of his handiwork. The glory, I mean, you could probably say majesty as well. Majesty and glory. Um, how the heavens proclaim his majesty. Yeah. So I was thinking this is kind of related. So there has to, if something were to happen, there has to be something. Um, so what I noticed is that... Um, we're talking about Passover here. It would have to be some some event, celestial event during Passover, if we're going to connect it with Hashem and the Israelites. Um, so what we have here during Nisan 14, this is uh, the, the Passover next year is April 15. Uh, well, let's start here. So on Nisan 1, which is interesting too, there's a crescent moon. Crescent is the beginning of the month and it happens in the constellation Aries. Remember that I told you that in the Passover, the sun was in Aries. So this is the month of the Passover. Hence why they put the blood of the ram on their doorpost. Um, you know, most likely, uh, it, it, you know, this month was considered the month of Amun, the Egyptian god Amun, and his uh, symbol was um, the, the ram. And if you slaughtered a ram, um, you know, it was considered a, a, a death penalty. So, you know, they put it on the doorpost. Anyway, so you have a crescent moon in Aries, right? On Nissan 14, all of the planets are in alignment. All of them. You have Saturn, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, and these are the constellations, right? Uh, Aquarius, Pisces, and uh, Aries. Um, also, Saturn is actually in the seagoat. So it goes from the seagoat onto the ram, which I think has some symbolism because God said, if you don't have a ram for the Passover, um, have a goat, right? So you have the Capricorn goat. Um, so you have all these planets that are in alignment on Nissan 14. I think that's significant because they go from the goat to the Passover ram. Um, so Saturn, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, you have the sun, Mercury, and Uranus. Um, and what I see, what I find also significant, which is kind of wild, right? Um, this is what I think is very, very symbolic because there, there is an alignment. Um, th these alignments happen, you know, probably not in, in this constellation all the time. Um, but the crescent moon starting the month in Aries, I think that's significant. But there's something that's very uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, and this can't be coincidental. So on the last day of, 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 of the Passover month of Nisan, on the last day, Nissan 30, there's a solar, uh, a partial solar eclipse right there in Aries, the month of the Passover. This is happening in Aries. Uh, what I find interesting is that the crescent moon starts the, the, the month, and then you have like a crescent sun that ends the month. So the, from the, the beginning to the end, right? And you have a crescent sun. Um, so it's like a crescent sun ends the month and a crescent moon begins the month. That's significant in itself. What I find interesting is that the moment that there's a solar eclipse on the same day, the same hour, same day, same hour, which I don't know if this has ever happened before. I used to Lorium, so I don't know how to confirm if this has ever happened. I doubt it. But on the same moment that there's a solar eclipse, there's a great conjunction, um, a complete conjunction of Venus and Jupiter, Venus being the royal star and Jupiter being the king star. And it happens in Pisces, which Pisces is a fish. If you see Aquarius, Aquarius is flooding the earth with waters, right? And then it makes sense because the constellation goes this way, the sun goes this way, right? So what do you have next? You have the sea with the fish in them. And this conjunction is happening here, which the sea in the Torah is symbolic of nation. So you have a kingdom that's being born in the constellation of the sea or the constellation of nations. Um, you have, and not only a conjunction, you have the Venus and Jupiter. And Christians actually like to associate this with the Bethlehem star because they're two royal conjunctions. They say that the conjunction of Venus and Jupiter was the Bethlehem star uh, because they're both royal stars. So obviously if you have this royal conjunction, it means a king is born. Um, but you know, okay. Anyway, so this is being uh, birthed right here in the sea, in the constellation of the sea, which is symbolic of the nation in the Torah. At the same time that there's a solar eclipse in the constellation of Israel, Aries, in the month of Passover. I find that very interesting. So there is backing um, or physical evidence that 
it may be true that this Mashiach will appear uh, in 2020 because all the signs are here. There's also speculation that there's going to be a red nova, like a new uh, star that's born in 2020, which is the first star to be born in, in recorded human history in like 10,000 years. So that has some significance, but I don't know if that's going to happen because the scientists some say that it will happen, but I don't know. Um, but it has backing because these symbols are happening during the time of the Passover. So uh, a kingdom being born, the royal uh, uh, royal planets, and a solar eclipse uh, in Aries. I find that very significant. You know, if this Mashiach appears, what's going to happen? Who knows? I mean, obviously he says, uh, next year I will share knowledge and wisdom. In order for him to share knowledge and wisdom, he has to have the Isaiah 11, uh, 2 experience where the, the doves rest upon this individual and he suddenly has the knowledge of, uh, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of wisdom. Um, you know, you know. other than that, I mean, what else could happen? A lot of job openings in Israel. I'm going to have to move there. <laughs> Are we going to have to update our resumes? Um, but, you know, it, it does have backing. You know, this morning I looked and I was like, yeah, there's backing. And this is, I don't think this has ever happened at the same time in, in, in recorded history. And you guys can actually, that have more um, skill, can actually confirm this event. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to take a short break. Just wanted to make this one last video. Thank you. Wow, guys, a new king, a new kingdom is born. Coming around the anniversary of uh, Israel becoming a nation, May 14th, 1948. Coming up on 2022. But guys... The new king, the new kingdom is going to be born. What kingdom is coming? Is it going to be the great deception that many are going to fall for? The great awakening is becoming the great deception. Stay tuned. We'll talk to you soon.